We all have to find a way to convince ourselves that the Eater Stochastic Calculus box is valid. We know what's in the box, a quick recipe of just two ingredients in the basic case, DT and DW. The product or outcome of the recipe is also familiar. DT squared is equal to zero. DW squared is equal to DT and DW times DT is equal to zero. And once we have the product of the recipe, then going from Taylor series to Eater's Lemma or manipulating stochastic differential equations is a piece of cake, well, almost. Whilst we can enjoy manipulating differential equations using these rules, if truth be told, as we already know, these differentials don't make any sense. They get their meaning only through the integrals. So these are just symbolic notations for these integrals. In the previous video, we explained the dw times dt term and now we are using the same very logic to see why dt squared equals zero. It is going to be a bit easier because we don't have any stochastic term in dt squared but it's going to be the same drill. So how does one approximate an integral? By discrete sum. So you take the interval from 0 to t here and let's say divide it into n sub intervals each of length delta t. Essentially, we split the intervals into sub intervals of length delta t and let's represent the n points of the sub intervals by t i's with i going from 0 to n, the number of sub intervals then the integral of dA squared can be written as the sum of the squares of delta t. So we are approximating continuous by discrete or infinitesimals by finite. And as n becomes very large, we expect this discrete sum to approach the value of the integral. Now here one can calculate the limit directly without any mention of probability. But the other rules we had in the box contain dW which is stochastic. So this deterministic limit doesn't make much sense for the other terms because any discussion of stochastic variables should have some mention of probability. Hence, one talks about convergence which has several modes. As mentioned in the other video, the most common one used in the stochastic integration problem we have is mean square convergence. So let's see if the mean square convergence produces zero for dt squared. We say, the sequence xn converges to x in the mean square if the expected value of the squared deviation from x goes to 0 as n becomes very large. What sequence, you ask? Well, you can view the sum of delta t squared as a function of n as a sequence with index n and we are claiming that this goes to 0. So we replace xn by the partial sum and x by 0. So in place of the pointwise limit, we write this probabilistic limit to be consistent with the approach used for the other rules in the box. Expected value of a deterministic term is the deterministic term. And we can now replace delta t by t divided by n. So we are pretty much back to the deterministic limit, which is reassuring. We just cancel one of the n's. And now as n becomes large, this goes to zero. And this is what they mean when they say dt squared is equal to zero. So this is how the magic recipe work. To go a step further, what happens if we apply the same very logic to dt? Does it go to zero as well? This dt would correspond to integral of ds to be consistent with the other terms. And we can approximate this integral as discrete sum of delta t. Let's recall the definition of the mean square convergence. So we replace xn by the sum of delta t and if we want to test whether this goes to zero then of course we replace x by zero. We have our definition of the limit. Next we replace delta t by t over n. t over n summed n times is just n times t over n. The n's cancel and we see the result is t squared which is not zero. So we conclude that the mean square limit of dt is not zero. As we already know, it in fact equals dt. So it seems like we can apply the same interpretation to all of the terms. 
Please give a thumbs up if you would like us to share more videos on the topic and I look forward to seeing you in the next.